Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, can you hear me loud and clear? Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you're audible. Yes. Clarity, clarity. Uh, there is a bit of echoing. Echoing is uh, when there are, I think, uh, many people, uh, everybody else will have to mute, then clarity would be there. Okay, yes.
everybody research is a process of systematic inquiry that entails collection of data documentation of critical information and analysis and interpretation of that data in accordance with suitable methodologies set by specific professional field research in academics involves many activities besides research this webinar is an effort to spread awareness and build a mindset for research among the students and faculty so without any delay to begin this webinar i cordially invite our beloved principal sir dr matthew t joseph to address the participants so please yes good afternoon can you hear me loud and clear yes sir thank you so uh, it's truly an honor for me to greet so many of you uh, who are extremely uh, uh, inquisitive as well as curious to find out how research can be done uh, i truly appreciate the, the starting sentences of uh, suma madam about research uh, you know it is said that uh, we do not have a research culture in this country and because of which we have got uh, so few nobel prizes uh, now you can ask me is nobel prize the measure of a uh, uh, research in a country i would think so at least in the uh, in our times this is a clear mark of the kind of effort which people put in and uh, also the commitment of a nation to ensure that uh, we grow as a uh, with people with a scientific temper uh, an inquisitive mind and also that perseverance which one requires to be able to do good research and most of the time we are all in a great hurry to do things uh, i am sure we have got uh, two experts here who are going to explain the whole process of research and uh, why research is important how it can be done uh, i think for most of us who are uh, aspiring to be researchers the idea of why research would become fairly evident but how to do it is a uh, something which would differ from discipline to discipline and this being such a an open topic uh, people from any any discipline could attend this and get benefit of the the experts uh, presentations i thank you very much for inviting me and uh, i would have been happy to spend uh, really happy to listen to the experts and uh, understand uh, what they have got to say uh, about research i hope all of you young people who are here would certainly benefit from this as well as ensure that you start your your journey of research today thank you very much all the very best i have got another meeting to attend and uh, please excuse me thank you all the best uh, thank you sir 
ओके नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट आर हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट डॉक्टर मनवेंद्र वशिष्ठ आई थिंक ड्यू टू सम इम्पोर्टेंट मीटिंग ही मे नॉट बी हियर आई कॉल डॉक्टर अविनाश गताडे सर टू स्पीक फ्यू वर्ड्स फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट Good afternoon, one and all present here. I am glad to welcome our beloved principal, Dr. T. J. Matthew. Both the speakers, my fellow colleagues, and all my dear students for the webinar, research, how and why. I, Dr. Abhinash Gatade, would like to express my pride to introduce to you. the department of applied science and humanities the mission of the department is to provide value based education and train students to develop basic skill set to achieve academic excellence the department of applied science and humanities at pscet have 17 multidisciplinary faculty members at present mainly related to physics chemistry mathematics and english background to cater the need of multidisciplinary students the department mainly take care of engineering students in their first year of pg program the main focus of the department is to develop among the students a sound foundation of basic scientific principles and soft skills which enables them to understand their core engineering course as well as develop good communication skills the department actively also encourages students for extra curricular activities the department of applied science and humanities has a distinguished record in both teaching and research the department has dedicated classrooms and the state of art laboratory facilities including language laboratory to support the academic programs and research activities the department of basic sciences and humanities constantly provide a holistic ambience transforming fresh young minds into future engineers now talking about engineering mathematics engineering mathematics is an integral part of the engineering without mathematics engineering is not possible so it is the art of applying mathematics to complex real world problems engineering depart in engineering department uh, sorry in engineering mathematics uh department we are having seven qualified and exper experienced faculty members the department conducts various activities for students for their overall development thank you uh thank you sir to move ahead uh, it is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker to you all Professor S Mohan Mahalakshmi Naidu completed his PhD in biomedical signal processing electronic systems from IIT Bombay. He has more than 18 years of experience as a teacher, researcher, head of the department and IQAC head. His research areas are medical signal processing and algorithms. He has forty-nine citations and H index of five for his works. He is associated with a number of professional bodies, and Mohan sir has conducted many technical workshops and training programs for students to help them develop interest in research and using cutting-edge tools like MATLAB, LabVIEW, and image processing. we are really happy to have you sir as a resource person today and it's over to you thank you ma'am thank you very much yes so first of all um 
very much thankful and uh, regards to the uh, Pillai group of institutions and in particular uh, Professor Matthew uh, Joseph who is the principal of this institute PHCAD and also uh, thankful to the, the head of the Department of Applied Science and uh, Humanities Dr. Manvendra Vasista and also today's uh, uh, my fellow colleague who is also presenting along with me so Dr. Narendra Kumar and uh, first of all, a warm welcome to all of the all the participants of today's webinar. And uh, so, last but not the least, that so uh, I would like to uh, really appreciate and thank Dr. Uh, Aganash and his uh, fellow colleagues. So, Professor Satish, Professor uh, Vijaya, Professor Harshada, Professor uh, Sheetal, and also his. Uh, beloved uh, student volunteers who has actually who have so played I would say a, a critical role of making this uh, event uh, what you call so uh, kind of realized and uh, so that's where you know efforts of this entire team uh, made us to be on this platform today. <clears throat> so with this, I would like to uh, get into the details of today's presentation. Rather, uh, it's a Discussion, it's not monologue. Hope I think uh, you're able to see my screen, right? Yeah. So, so uh, welcome, so a warm welcome to all of you for this uh, today's webinar on Faces Aware uh, and uh, Why. So these are those, you know, say a couple of objectives. Uh, probably uh, that's where I think you know we are uh, here today to uh, take away that. So how to carry and uh, you know, say why to do the research and how to do the research and you know, so what are the benefits of being a teacher or you no know, as a researcher. So we get it, and then where to start as so big a uh, big uh, tumbling block of our you know, path, and then so maybe like you know, so what. Uh, I mean, say the ways that we have to uh, select a particular you know, research topic, and then maybe in sort of it's what are what are what are the things that are you know, expected uh, while I do the research, and then maybe uh, a couple of uh, issues around the the writing a paper and also reading the research paper, and then so, uh, finally I'll conclude with my own example of uh, my so my. Investigation, racist interest, investigation as an example. Hope I think that will uh, be also a big uh, takeaway to motivate and so what are the hurdles that comes up in the research. And uh, with this objectives, and I would like to emphasize here that so the research is um, so the, 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 the vertical in which I'm there is an immaterial to maximum extent is because as long as we are in the field of engineering, so the, the applied science, I think, so uh, Dr. Avinash, I think, you know, rightly mentioned that the uh, the applied science are found, um, so is uh, the foundation. And on this foundation, so the engineering technology would get uh, developed. And uh, so that way, uh, in a sense that, so the research, because for the basic you know, applied science uh, uh, people, it would be, uh, I mean, it would be difficult to say that, yes, so yes, I, have, I may have to actually uh, do the, um, so I select a topic which is into core mathematics or science, physics, or some sort of, but then like, so uh, it is like, you know, say we need to select a topic which is something applied in the sense that, so the, the way engineering is no way different from in, uh, uh, the mathematics and you know, mathematics no way different from the, the other. So the thing is that only we need to uh, relate, uh, relate the steps, so the, the basic sciences, and on that the engineering is uh, plays a major role. And, uh, and on that, so the technology gets developed, and then one technology kills the other technology, so that is where, but then the basic formulation and the foundation will never get changed. Um, so with this, these, these are the you know, objectives. Let's try to see that. So how many of these things we will be able to uh, make it uh, as a takeaways of today's uh, discussion. So the first and foremost thing that comes up is that how and why to do the research. How and why to do the research. 
So the why part actually, you know, say uh, leads us to the motivation. So what are the motivating factors uh, so that I should do a, a research? So we know that, like, so normally, very few people we find that so they are very much passionate to create knowledge. So that's one of the you know motivation to do the research. But then that uh, uh, given the condition that I'm well off in all aspects of my uh, myself and independence and the society around. So that's where you know so that leads uh, leads a person to do uh, with a passion to do the research, and that uh, primarily uh, contributes to the knowledge creation. And uh, another motivation would probably make any person to go ahead with the uh, to start uh, doing the research is that the name and fame, expecting that yes, I would like to actually be recognized in society as one of the unique, uh, like a scientist who has created so and so. So that's where you know, another vertical in which uh, people get motivated to do the research. Um, and uh, more than these two, so uh, most of us actually fall into the category of the third and fourth, where we basically you know say the major motivation is our finances in the sense that so how well of um, in the sense like how so comfortable I am um, living, so that's where you know so better job prospects. So better job prospects uh, 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 are some sort of so so in a way linked to our research. And also, so these days, and so it is also becoming mandatory for me to actually carry uh, do the research, and then there must be a uh, clear cut uh, research outcome in order to see myself actually somewhere, right? And also, that's where like this is becoming mandatory, so mandation. So that's that's where we see uh, ourselves that yes, and so why we need to do the research part uh, motivates us to actually better uh, for better job prospects. And also mandatory to me the you know say yes and so but, uh, down the line say 2022 I might see myself as a you know, say PhD holder otherwise and so there would be some sort of limitations as of you know, say further say uh, what do you call say promotions uh, you know, so getting inducted into some sort of verticals and all that right so this is this is what and so primarily the motivation part of it uh, why we need to do it but. Also, I mean, so what are the ways? So the ways, and you will see, so ways and approaches, assuming that, and so research is primarily defined as, as a, a systematic investigation. So basically establishing the facts. So what is fact? Factual, factual information has to be uh, reported. That's what the research is. So research need not be this fact uh, be favorable to the humankind in any form, in the sense that, so whatever I investigate, the investigation outcome may be positive or may be negative, doesn't matter, but as long as the fact is fact, so, so and is being reported, so is what something like the, the fundamental definition of research is being met. Otherwise, somewhere we are compromising uh, in terms of uh, plagiarism, in terms of the values, and in terms of the true meaning of uh, research. So with this, and so if at all, if you look at, so what in particular, uh, what is it for a teacher? So, uh, I mean, the, the research component would basically, you know, say, uh, give, gives a confidence to the teacher. And uh, a passionate teacher should always care for student learning. So that's where, you know, our entire education is. And so instead of, say, what you call teacher uh, perspective, it is becoming a student perspective, the like, outcome-based education. So that way, every, uh, uh, I mean, so teacher, I mean, any pa pa uh, passionate teacher uh, will always care for the student learning and enjoys every session of his or uh, her delivery. In the sense that, in case, so, so what do they deliver? Any any content that is that has been delivered in a particular session, if he or uh, she sees that, yes, it has been reached or understood by the students, so that is where something tremendous joy is always and so uh, also, right, and so the teacher enjoys. So that's where uh, this uh, research component would uh, basically facilitate and help the teacher to become more confident and then uh, become, so, so his way of delivery is unique. Uh, in terms of, say, quoting his own examples, 
So examples of its investigated uh, uh, outcomes and all that. So these are those struggles which are not which you uh, normally we do not find in any textbook or in the books that we have as a reference material for our day-to-day -day life of uh, teaching. So these are those experiences will in fact so need not be specifically said or discussed with the students, but yes, students are smarter than us, are uh, smart enough to understand the the spoken uh, contents of any session is with experience or just simply you know, kind of you know, bookish. That's what uh, the you know, kind of uh, comfort of the conference that you know, uh, gets built up from the research. And in a way that makes our understanding, uh, so it broadens it in the sense that, so bits and pieces of our understanding makes it so very unified in the sense, if I have an understanding of one system, is is equally applicable to the other uh, verticals of the systems where I have no understanding of it. So that's where you know kind of uh, uh, the comfort and the uh, experience that it gives. So so that's where the kind of you know, teacher must always be you know keep in mind that so research must always be carried factually with his own or her own experiences. So not to actually get it done. So that's where I think uh, uh, principles are uh, rightly mentioned that. So uh, so there is uh, no culture. Uh, and so the culture of racist culture is very much minimal in India is because so it has become a mandatory. So out of mandation, I should become a doctorate. I should get a degree is what is our aim. But then so in with that aim, we are compromising majorly on what is the significance of research uh, or what it is supposed to be done is not being done. So with that, so ways to select a topic for research. That's where uh, I think you know, most of the beginners uh, are even, uh, you know, say kind of uh, or, uh, sort of you know, experience uh, people also struggle to where to or uh, how to uh, start a uh, research, right? So where to start. So there are two ways I have actually put up. So there are two ways. So one is that uh, the research guide would basically facilitate. The other uh, way is the researcher himself or herself should find out about your topic. Uh, so now these are also, I mean, so being said that these two ways, the, the research guide as a supervisor uh, in some of the premier institutes or in most of those and so in uh, the project funded uh, uh, fundings and all that, so wherever we have the projects. So there you see that so a particular you know, professor, research professor has developed his own vertical or her own vertical and would like to actually take up the people who are interested in that particular vertical. So that's where, you know, so if at all, if uh, any uh, person person who basically gets an opportunity to join any research group which which has been already well established is you know, so the bone for him or her is because that the the problem is defined well defined and readily uh, there to uh, work it on so there it saves a lot of time in the sense that so your your struggle to find out where to start what to start and all that there is already a knowledge base has been created by your uh, super superiors or super, um, what you call seniors who have already worked in that particular vertical and the research supervisor would basically facilitate you to get get started with the topic. So that's where, so you need not actually find out uh, much, uh, um, uh, find any difficulty to start with. Only thing is that you need to have that attitude of, so reading, learning, right? So the learning, as long as you have the learning, so this, the first one is the best uh, way to start with. So meaning that uh, identifying uh, a person who is working in that vertical and then so matching your interest with him or with the, you know, say the supervisor. Second uh, way uh, to select a particular topic for research is the, the researcher himself. Uh, in the sense, again, the struggle comes up or the question comes up with that, how or where, you know, how to start with it. So, but then what, the commonality between, I mean, uh, uh, in both of these approaches is that they are identifying the research gap, identifying, uh, identifying the research gap. So how to find out the research gap? So maybe supervisor has actually given you, you know, say the vertical, right? This is the vertical that in which you are supposed to work on. Or in the, in the second approach that you need to identify a particular topic to work on. So the, the commonality between these two approaches for selection of a topic is that, I, uh, finding the research gap, 
right so so maybe uh, in just before getting into the you know say kind of uh, say the the central idea of how to actually go ahead and you know where i can find my topic to start with so, so a few questions to reflect on so these are the you know say few questions to reflect on so a couple of seconds just please try to spend so you need to actually speak out but reflect within yourself reflect on these questions within yourself normally we all do these things but then like so uh, with what intention with what uh, outcome or expectation and uh, so how do i basically you know so start with and why uh, and what i expect out of it uh, uh, matters a lot so maybe these are those few questions in case if i know the answer legitimately then yes i think you are on the right path that you almost so are you know, um, so can start your own you need not even uh, require any support any support from anybody to start working on any research topic or the problem so when do you read a research paper why do you read it in the sense of any research article and what are the major sections of any research article is supposed to be and what uh, all you look uh, for when you are basically referring to any research article and your understanding on so what is conference in the journal journal patent uh, significance uh, significance in the sense so what do you expect so when i refer in a conference paper so what i expect what do i expect in it and if i refer a general paper what do i expect in it and you know, if at all if i'm referring a patent so what do i expect so referring to a patent so if i expect that and so there is some sort of idea and you know some entire description of the idea uh, uh, is if you are expecting then yes and so the understanding is wrong in the sense like so patent would never basically describe the entire entire so the internals of it right so that's where so the understanding on these three, three verticals like conference magazine journals i do not differentiate much but then yes so conference journal and patent right the other is that how do you select a topic to carry out investigations are million dollar question for today's uh, webinar then why do you write and when do you write and then how do you evaluate your own research work hope i think you have reflected on these questions and you have some sort of understanding on this and then in due course of time while we discuss in case these understandings are somewhere uh, not up to the mark and so maybe hope i think that will basically get us you uh, know say clear cut understanding so what is uh, i mean if you look at entire so the entire focus is on research article publication right so by now i think you know, it is clear that so anything everything will basically start and end with most of the time end with the the research article research paper so that's where i think and so our first and foremost source of information to start with is the research publications right so before getting into the next slide let's just you uh, know give you a, a, a brief uh, understanding of conference general and patent the conference would always summarize the ideas and major implementations and these implementations may not be of that strong so the idea and little bit of you know, supporting information has been worked out and then uh, so would be uh, should get reported in conference so you will not are uh, no one should not expect that so conference paper has the you know, full proof of any concept as the idea has been implemented and then so it has been tested to the fullest extent it is not possible in the conference so in a journal so yes it is possible then so the ideation and its implementation and you know there is a thorough process and the method has been actually well described and it can be repeated in a way so general paper is what i think that's what we give you know so higher so maximum weight is and in patent so patent is also more of uh, more of you uh, know so self content in the sense uh, in my opinion and in, in most of the uh, people's opinion that so conference and journal papers are more valuable for us to refer than a patent patent is only a, a reference but not for our understanding meaning that patent do not describe the internals how a particular outcome or uh, say output has been achieved it just simply describes the benefits 
or uh, say the, what what all things that are uh, say possible and uh, so outcomes of this particular patent the process uh, or methodology so that way the patent do not basically give us the internals of it whereas journal and conference would, would always actually give us the entire internals of any concept or topic so that is the reason uh, people always suggest that in case any work is is supposed to be patented or are going for the patent then better not to actually first publish it first file a patent and then go for the publication the meaning that so journal uh, the any publications of like the conferences and journals would in fact give the entire understandings so with this and so uh, hoping uh, hoping that and so you have reflected on these questions and will you know try to address these so let's uh, see what what our understanding that we get it so now uh, since our focus is so the moment we talk about any research research has to actually start with some sort of so research, uh, research articles right or publications that's where uh, the entire universe everywhere in you know, the entire uh, world uh, the the commonly accepted fact is that if i have a publication in sci index since i have been always i will always be recorded so with high uh, in at least in the, in the let's say vertical of research or uh, in teaching or uh, in those open r and d sectors so why is it being given that much of no say weight is is because it has that that much of value uh, so that's where you no know, so our focus uh, would be on the research articles and uh, what are the major sections of it and then what details should it contain or would it contain right so if you uh, formally start with normally you must have studied by now it's a nothing so secret by now uh, you must have studied many papers many publications of conferences journals and uh, magazines and uh, what so that you will see the commonality of the the publications what is it is that the first and foremost thing is the uh, <coughs> type <coughs> so is the title <coughs> is the title <coughs> so <coughs> title should be specific uh, title should be always specific it cannot be generic next comes up is an abstract so when it comes to abstract so i think you know, most of you have written at least one publication one paper but then now reflect on on the self that what i have actually you have actually no written in the abstract so normally what happens is that we write abstract first and then we will get on to the contents but uh, the process must always be so process must always be the other way around first and you should i uh, should actually get ready with the work <clears throat> and work outline and its outcomes and then i should come back to the abstract and then conclude it so in that so perspective title any paper what you see is a title abstract in the abstract so please uh, uh, um, so follow me uh, carefully that in abstract so there must be four sentences in abstract there must be four sentences what are those first sentence what is it the second sentence what are the shortcomings of this or the topic or that method or the technique or whatever whatever has been you know, reported and what is your hypothesis about that Me meaning that your possible solution in one sentence and out of working on that so what basically you got as a result so what did you achieve and so your conclusion out of it these are the four or five sentences are concrete or must be there in any abstract so that's where you no know, so the summary of your entire work done in each sentence right so these are the four five sentences must always be so if there is some sort of like so that's where do not compromise on referring those papers which are substandard and always uh, refer those papers which are of high standard in the sense else your uh, triple ip or uh, web of sciences uh, science direct so these are papers because these are actually gone through a, a stages of peer review 
so peer review so if there is actually substandard uh, content or uh, meaning uh, so less meaning or no meaningful content in it and so it it it, it will always get rejected then and there so that's where the you know say request or humble request to all the you know say uh, uh, participants of today's webinar that you always so refer a high standard uh, publication only meaning that so these are uh, the, the, the proper contents are actually written with the significance what is supposed to be there in abstract will be there if you are referring to so abstract should have these four sentences what is it what is shortcoming and what is your uh, solution for it and what is your result obtained uh, upon the work done uh, uh, investigation and conclusion so then next session section of any paper that, <coughs> that you see is introduction <coughs> so next is introduction so what should be there in the introduction so introduction must always be so whenever whenever you take say two to three uh, say good standard uh, high standard papers so in the introduction itself you should find the motivation you should find the motivation and what motivated to investigate upon or to take up that particular topic to uh, <clears throat> investigate and so what is the problem what is the problem and so what is actually the solution for it has been proposed so that's where the introduction must always be it, so that is possible to uh, i mean refer the earlier race, uh, literature and uh, and from those these conclusions have to be made so introduction should always contain the motivation the problem identified and solution to it so then uh, next uh, section normally comes up is that material and met methods materials and methods so this is actually one of the crucial part of any publication or research article so so here materials and methods what material material should contain what method should contain so if i know the significance and then i am damn sure that so whenever i'm working on or whenever i'm reporting my work i would always so, so signify with a lot of significance i will deliberately so uh, what you call so detail all the all the, the the required contents so now the materials should contain the how i have because data is a critical or crucial part of any research without data we cannot actually do anything right i need to have a data so maybe the data is obtained from a primary source or a secondary source but then i need to have the data right so so the materials uh, would describe the data collection so that so how i have acquired i say the entire data uh, and uh, so these data data uh, acquire uh, uh, acquiring um methods right so which are the instruments or which are the you know, experimental setup has been used to acquire or which are the populations uh, all those so details are actually described in materials and from that i will understand okay yes to do any research in in, in the in a particular uh, vertical so what are the you know so sources through which i can set up my research uh, setup right so maybe of experimental or maybe non experimental it can be right so that's where uh, the material uh, would uh, signifies and methods the methods is the one that is actually what has been actually proposed by you and how are you applying the, your own proposed method right on this data to prove that so if there is some sort of a significance uh, 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 in the sense of improvement or not right so that's where the you know so material method section of any research publication uh, has a lot of value to it and uh, is a, a really rich resource for us to identify okay so this is how i can actually set up my research so then again feasibility test so it just not selecting something like yes these days so ai is being spoken so can i apply you know so ai onto my this covid uh, covid related research but then there are limitations how do i get the data so do i need, need to depend on the government sources or do i need to depend on the public do i need to depend on my own self that i can set up is what basically uh, lets us or uh, uh, makes us aware that the feasibility of a particular research and what are the sources that i need to uh, approach to basically get the data 
So next is that you have the the data and applied your methods on the data and those results, open results are supposed to be put up. The factual things, factual, whatever you factually you obtain may be good, may be uh, not good uh, in the sense, so maybe improved one, may not be improved one, but the fact is fact. So what has obtained should be reported. There should not be any uh, manipulation in terms of these things. If it are, there is a manipulation, then so that actually you know, so attracts kind of ethics, compromised on the ethics, and uh, also ethics of research, and also the plagiarism. So there, you should not copy anybody's content. So the research uh, primarily should contain the factually whatever you have obtained, and that should get reflected in the research and discussion. So on those factual outcomes of the research, or the investigation, so what is your perspective? That, so what do you discuss? Uh, what, what, what do you derive? The conclusions. So those conclusions, the you know, elaborated uh, uh, conclusions are, are always, must always be there in the discussion. And uh, the conclusion should conclude, say, two to three lines in line with my abstract. So meaning that I have actually implemented this, uh, I have actually investigated this, and this method has been actually used, and this is my outcome. So that's all. So in most of the cases, what happens is that, the, the, so you, you find in case the, the uh, substandard uh, research papers are referred, then you see that the no link up between them. So abstract is written something, interaction is something different, what you conclude is something different. So this uh, is something that we should avoid. So, so that's where the significance of any paper uh, and its uh, sections are. And with this understanding, in case if you start uh, reading, uh, referring to any research article, then I'm damn sure that, okay, so any so two more are there, that is um, acknowledgement. Sometimes, sometimes you do need to acknowledge in case you have uh, used our clinical facilities in my uh, in my case so i have used a clinical facilities of mgm and also uh, uh, dinar mangeshwar hospital and a couple of other hospitals since my research medically is into biomedical so there who are all, all those people help me indirectly i should basically acknowledge acknowledge so the same thing uh, is what comes under acknowledgement and then references are must, so based on which we basically uh, uh, form the the topic and then refer that, so this is how so a particular validation has been done and then referring to that, so that's where again we adapted a similar approach of validating or uh, referring to any method or considering any gold standard uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So that way references are must to refer and then cite them as uh, in a very judiciously in the sense just not for the count of number of counts number of papers or not to increase the count of papers and all that but it the every paper should always be referred judiciously in the sense that if there is any significant citation uh, of its content in any way of considering these gold standard for comparison or validating it or or, or any uh, statistical uh, reference so that way uh, we should always add if the method of that particular referen uh, reference is actually is similar to our method and our method is actually you know shown or uh, so maybe obtained to be better then yes uh, we need to so that way reference must always be judiciously listed out not to uh, include the number so sometimes extra information may be required sometimes sometimes not all the time so in that case the appendix would all, uh, also come up so that these are the major sections of, uh, of any research articles are supposed to be and now you i think have some sort of understanding that abstract means what it signifies what content it should contain and introduction should contain what Material methods should contain what? Result and discussion should contain what? With this understanding, so what uh, so the takeaways? What are the you know, takeaways when I refer? Say, if I take up one research paper, I must find out, I must be able to find out the, the so, so four or five takeaways of every research paper of high good standard. Meaning that, 
So the significance of every section is in fact that the contents are actually you know so put up or reported uh, accordingly, right? So these are the takeaways. From these takeaways is what basically our research starts, our our pro problem formulation starts, in the sense that. So, what is the motivations? Because whenever you refer any uh, research article, uh, expected it is expected that something new stated or uh, solved is reported in the in that particular research uh, article. So, the problem identified in the sense, okay, this particular research is is actually you know is being reported reported. This is actually you know, what you call investigation carried on. No, on a particular village, and village, we would like to understand the patterns of diseases, uh, patterns of their, you know, say some sort of, you know, difficulties, right? So on that, so that's where there is a problem identified. So the first and foremost thing is that what is the problem identified? So when I refer, when you refer any research paper of good standard, must always have so one research problem so please <clears throat> signify on that please think on that problem what is that problem and so so the problems related to society are technical or uh, some sort of technology and all that it can be but that is one of the research question that you can actually identify and from that hypothesis or idea so then the proposed solution, okay, this is actually a problem is being investigated and after being investigated, so this is actually the, you know, say, uh, hypothesis. So the, the proposed solution, what is the proposed solution? So is again, you need, so again, another resource for you, right? So proposed solution is another resources for you. Okay, what is the problem identified? See, you need not even go actual to the village and understand or observe and you know say note it. That's another so another practical way of actually identifying the problems, no doubt. But then for a technical field, so that uh, that will not basically help us to the major extent, maybe management and you know services in other verticals. Or uh, uh, it will help uh, our humanities. It will help so picking up any research problems by observation, uh, observing the you know uh, surroundings. But uh, in a technical manner, so we need to actually look at the motivations which have been reported by other uh, investigated uh, outcomes. Then hypothesis is what is their problem and evaluation of uh, the idea. So what are the benefits of his, his uh, um, what you call uh, um, problems? What are the benefits uh, are, say, are problems identified? Right, so that's where the evaluation of the idea and own research, you now need to think that, okay, is that idea good? Critically, critically examine the paper, critically examine, critically look at it. It's just not reading up any research article just like that, but you need to really critically look at it and then say every sentence is meaningful for you to take up that as a starting point for you to actually start with any research topic. Then. That in, on that basis, critically look at the, you know, is the idea proposed is a good idea. If it is not, in case if you are any, if you are able to conclude, yes, there is some sort of this thing I, you can improve upon that it's a future and so start uh, starting or uh, say gap or uh, kind of problem to start with. And what are the flaws in implementation? Quite possible that in in methodologies, while you actually apply uh, to say the solutions, may be some sort of say the flaws or uh, some sort of uh, say uh, what do you call it? Um, con uh, kind of like say uh, not appropriate and not correct. Uh, so maybe those critically need to examine. And that even you know, can help you to start with uh, identifying the problem and its usability. If there is actually usability, there is some greater usability of it, then yes, you can extend the same work and take it further. And any controversial points. So that's where so your own analysis after reading or uh, referring any research article with this understanding, I'm damn sure that every other uh, so research article should get you a one new problem to be investigated.
and with all the things that are required are in fact was mentioned then and there in the sense what materials what population what data sets that are required so how it has been evaluated how or the you know research uh, what are the research uh, uh, outcomes results and what conclusions what further can be improved upon that's where so the the significance uh, of every paper would in fact and uh, help you to identify the research gap that research gap is what is uh, selecting a particular topic to investigate right so similarly what are the contributions apart from the hypothesis and solutions are other ideas in the sense like to say how uh, i mean so the software tools used which to software tools say maybe some sort of uh, research maybe simulation based some sort of uh, the physically uh, applied on a uh, subject or uh, the population so that way the valid validation techniques and all other things also you'll get to know from this right so with that uh, what we basically so you know the take away uh, today's topic is that how to start a research topic is possible from every good standard research article and then with that so when and why so when to read a research article and why to read it so with that understanding that i have identified so now i identified so for that i identified a work i need to now you know so what can like prior more understanding so that's where the comes uh, the question comes up is that so when i when so when i identified a particular topic then i need to review the investigation research work reported so there have been like across the globe there have been uh, i mean so there are uh, several groups parallelly working so for example the best example is that four year uh, sorry uh, the nyquist and shannon so i think you know, from the applied mathematics uh, you know the people are the faculty members who are into applied mathematics so they can uh, understand that so these two techniques nyquist rate right or uh, sampling rate nyquist rate and shannon are the two mathematicians worked parallelly during the same era but so in different locations but in both uh, conclude is the same so that way so there there are actually several groups of people across the globe are working are investigating referring their work to start with our new problem as they suggested so these suggestions would always be clear from every research article that they are reporting so that way the review review uh, of those investigations uh, reported uh, must be done and that's where uh, we do uh, read or uh, refer the research articles and to identify the research gaps that we do know to compare and evaluate you know say own uh, others other research work and you know, outcomes so to compare and evaluate so now i, I so once i basically know put my what you'll say footpath clear or uh, my path of investigation clear and to all uh, so simple simulations and some sort of say uh, experiments and all that are being done then i need to compare those outcomes right so again for that again we need to refer those reference uh, our research articles and uh, also for data because data is oil right so data is actually central idea so any research has to have a data and the data could be of various uh, forms so here i would like to emphasize that for applied science people data data is actually you know say maybe uh, in a mathematical applied mathematics so it can be something like you say uh understanding this this is pattern and uh, so look at the nature so nature is so well established even in studying the patterns of a particular tree fibonacci series fibonacci series actually like we have why flower uh, will always have i then say one petal or no say two petals three petals five petals or eight petals 11 13 there are like so fibonacci numbers right why so so understanding patterns and then from those that is where nature inspired algorithms are the you know methods or the techniques so bio inspired is
is one possibility in the sense that so I, I have a disease some bone here but then the virus how a virus is able to move from that location to the other location where so the the other location so there are infinity possibilities to move around right but then why is it moving only to that direction so what is inspiring uh, uh, so that's where you know, nature inspired algorithms uh, is is i think these days so it's a very um, uh, popular and also bio inspired algorithms and the nature uh, looking at the nature various possibilities of identifying the patterns in case if you can actually formulate around it and then yes it has some a lot of meaning to it maybe some research outcomes are of uh, are of direct uh, vertical so benefit to the human kind some may not so so with that so the again objectives of writing paper once i have an understanding investigated some work identified my research work and then legitimately investigated and say would like to report for peers peers that is into experts to review upon the content and then yes so in that case then again i'll follow the, the legitimate significance of every section then i would actually even report those appropriate contents into those sections right when i am reporting so so then again when do you when uh, you are ready to uh, write a paper so then simple idea or hypothesis alone uh, cannot get you any research publication so ideas because every one of us ideators right but then this idea has to be implemented and then shown some benefit to the human kind right so that's where uh, the you know kind of the the knowledge creation happens or the research that's you know fact finding or knowledge creation happens so that way uh, a simple idea and hypothesis cannot get you a uh, research publication but, but eligible for short communication so there is like something you want to uh, retain your ideation with you then it can be communicated uh, in a short communication that can be further investigated as your topic and so that you are the first one to report it and then extensive review surveys can also be reported as a research I mean, so paper review papers or uh, research articles and uh, when you are ready with any investigation results which are improved compared to the old ones or existing ones yes you can actually report it as a, a research article when the research results uh, are i mean need to be validated critically examined the results are uh, contradictory uh, to those existing yes you can again report it back and not encouraging uh, results but the idea is good even then you can still retain your own idea in the, in, in the in, in a way to you know, say signify that it is yours and uh, while so while patenting work after patent then then file uh, you know, so go for a uh, publication so that's where and so um, so several groups across the uh, globe are working and then they have um, so they are creating so iprs patents and you know say are uh, reporting many of these things so as uh, a resource for us and these are the checks uh, for i think so we are running out of uh, time but uh, i think uh, sir uh, how much uh, time do do i have hello and sir hello yes sir yeah so how much time do i have i think i'm exceeding my time okay uh, is it fine 5 five, 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 10 minutes would be okay okay sir no sure sure, sure sir yeah 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 so quickly i think so with this uh, these are the checks while you are reporting any uh, research article uh, problem is identified and it has a relevance and uh, hypothesis clearly uh, described and then your uh, uh, your whether it's an experimental or non experimental so these are those like the materials what are the materials this is actually critical part your setup requirements and the parameters that you are considering to investigate is sufficient or not and population size in case if i conclude some say disease on a say covid uh, kind of disease that yes my vaccine is working on say two people 
right? Two people have uh, say tested on, and then can I if I conclude? And the same thing, or uh, it has been tested on two lakh people. So then, so which one has more uh, the uh, more validity? So that's where the population size also matters majorly. Uh, so that should be taken uh, given uh, uh, taken care. And whether I'm working on a primary data or secondary data. Whether I'm working on a primary or secondary, so why the primary and secondary is at most important is that I do not know the standards by which the data has been acquired. So that so when I say that my signal has been acquired at a sampling rate of say 300, but whether that 300 sampling rate has been really put up or 500 has been put up is actually a big question mark. So that's where the kind request to all those researchers, so those are using the secondary data, be cautious. The data, and if possible, if uh, uh, the things facilitates, start with your own uh, primary data, methods adapted, reference techniques, and all that. So uh, that that's where like you no know, kind of checks that you need to look at. So now I think I'll just briefly look at our, uh, so show my own example of my own research. So I have investigated on impedance cardiography. So this is actually similar to electrocardiogram (ECG). Uh, but ECG can talk in terms of uh, say electrical activity of the heart, but then impedance cardiography (ICC) talks about uh, the mechanical activity in the sense how well my heart is able to pump the required blood for uh, when the body is actually you know, so put for some sort of work or exercise or walking, right? So that's where the impedance cardiography has the capability to. Tell us the mechanical activity or the functional functionality of the heart that it is able to or not able to or something. So the same thing is acquired. The physiological aspects are acquired through these waveforms through our instrumentation, the methodology that we have adapted, uh, designed and uh, developed and adapted. So so from this we will we write some algorithms to acquire these. Uh, what you call cardiac events, and these events uh, are the you know, event uh, values are the inputs for the formulations. So these are the several researchers across the globe have in fact you know say formulated. So it's a mathematical, so truly mathematics with an you know, understanding of domain in the sense that the 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 physio physiology is understood, but then so came up with the formula. So this formula is based on the thorax, like the thorax is, and so we are chest, right? Chest part, thorax. Assuming that the thorax is in a cylindrical shape or a conical shape, so several people have formulated and uh, uh, and proposed these equations. So these are the several equations way back, and so starting from 1974 to 2005. So with the different corrections uh, uh, and correcting uh, corrections, assume uh, and again in, uh, incorporating the assumptions and all that in the modeling of the thorax as a uh, model or uh, equation, right? So now several people again uh, investigated on this, and uh, so those investigation results. And what are the limitations that we found? The limitations of those all equations so far are that they they are actually lack of high repeatability. So meaning that so when I when is is applied on the same subject, so the the measurement must always be repeatable, right? That's where also gold standard another requirement. So then what are the causes? So causes found out to be that the SV equations that those equations are formulations made based on simplified models of the thorax. Thoracic impedance is one of the major, uh, say, what you call causes. So that's where then, then again, say, Ajit Kumar happened to be my one of the examiner. He's a NASA scientist and who has actually proposed way back in 1998 that the use of neural networks may solve that non-linearity inability uh, captured being captured in this formulation. So can be in fact also taken care. By um, so by establishing the you know non-linear relationship between the stroke volume and the parameters, so that's where you know and then uses came into picture. Then we for the, again there are a couple of new patents uh, in line with it, um, uh, and then then so uh, and again those all are actually have some sort of limitations that they use ensembled average inputs in the sense averaged inputs. So again, the averaged inputs will kill some of the cardiac events, which we do not want to. 
then that's what uh, we have actually picked up and then so started investigating and then we have proposed a technique which is based on a neural networks and then it can estimate the stroke volume on a beat to beat basis it has a lot of significance is because so the averaged one would kill the you know say say 10 cycles are averaged out or 20 cycles are averaged out so that way so that will kill the latency part of it so that's where we have proposed and investigated and uh, so accordingly so we have actually got a this thing and we could actually establish a method for b to b to calculation of uh, our estimation of stroke volume and that's where you know, the material method in our the thing so we have reference method that is echocardiography for which we have actually uh, recorded all the recordings in the clinical setup so and again under rest and post exercise conditions that's where the clinical setup so it is uh, along with the doctor so a cardiologist senior most cardiologist Uh, so far, Haridas sir at Pune uh, Haridas uh, Heart Care is uh, one of the senior most uh, interventional uh, cardiologist. So who has actually helped us? And uh, our method we have recorded uh, on the same subject simultaneously, both in rest and post exercise conditions. Then validate our method. So against a gold standard method, which is also known as so is Doppler echocardiography for estimating how well is our method. So that's how we basically you know so take in the database and apply it on, uh, on our uh, methods. So there are a couple of other techniques that we have developed. at our um, so at spi iit bombay so these methods also we have uh, incorporated for noise reduction and all that and my own method of you know, say for point detections and uh, finally we could uh, you know, say come out with uh, the the model development and then these are these various sets of models we made it and then out of those models i mean training testing and then validations uh, model uh, of models based on those Simultaneously acquired beat to beat informations has been used for this, and then the results. If you look at the results of estimations using those equations, are having mean error of this much. You look at it, and then uh, whereas our proposed method uh, using the neural networks has a mean error of uh, so significantly reduced, the point three ml minus point zero point five ml, right? By using so various models. Look at the significance of improvement. So that's where uh, we have concluded that what is our summary of the work done, and then <clears throat> how we were successful in uh, doing it, and then conclusions uh, that yes, with the ANS, the you know, best method are effective by, uh, than those uh, equation-based methods. And within that models of six five, uh, what are the more models, and which is the best performed? So based on the you know, say, and 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 CID, that's where we concluded, right? And then future work. So maybe the same thing has to be concluded on larger pool of data with the population. Say in order to see that yes, this model has its analyzed significance. Then uh, only when we test it on a larger population. Uh, and that to under you know, so uh, what you call so clinical uh, uh, recorded data then we can uh, comfortably conclude that yes it is is really significantly helping out to estimate in uh, stroke volume in a non invasive way that is without any pressing into a lot so that's where i think my my inputs on this uh, topic uh, so um, yeah so thank you thank you very much for giving me this opportunity Over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for uh, thank you for this uh, informative session. Uh, right from starting from identifying the research problems, you have explained um, uh, in detail till we reach the conclusion part of a research article. Um, thank you very much, sir. And let us take uh, the questions, if any. Yes. 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 uh we have uh, madam jyoti dhanke is asking if we send a paper in conference in mm -hmm. which area topic is like not limited to okay they uh, they say uh, it's not limited to a particular topic then uh, how are we uh, assured that paper will get selected um, if we send any other topic 
uh, ma'am, so they basically look at the uh, relevance. So if there is actually in an any applied sense also if it is linked, then they should actually be accepting it. Otherwise, so they will actually communicate back that yes, it is actually falling out of the scope of this particular uh, conference room. So that's where uh, the co co conference coordinator would always communicate. So we have one such experience then. So uh, at some point of time, I have actually communicated to the same uh, say conference. So during that time, so they have accepted, but in the say, second time, so they de uh, redefine the the what you call the relevance, and then based on that, they have communicated back. Mm -hmm. But I think this is uh, um, it is possible to uh, then and there to decide upon like so whether there is a reference uh, what you call relevance or not. So okay. yeah. It's not that difficult in, in, in my opinion that so yes, so really, uh, rightly, but these days, yes, so anything that you publish almost so anything in the engineering so is being accepted, that's a different story. But then critically, if at all, if you see that the coordinator has to uh, clearly indicate to the author that it is falling out of the scope of this paper, that is not to mislead the people who are referring to that particular conference. Okay. Yes, sir. I think we have uh, two more. I think uh, it's not a question in particular. It's a request uh, to send UGC care list journals. And uh, we also have uh, Mr. Kuldeep Pule saying that please send UGC care as well as scop uh, Scopus in journal list. Uh, um, right. So, yeah, what I suggest in this in this case is that so though we are into still I mean under the purview of UGC because we are an affiliated institute or autonomous institution under a government uh, uh, any university and the university comes under UGC still still I strongly suggest not to refer the UGC list at all right away but then uh, refer the scopus to some extent uh, but otherwise SEI or rubber files and you know, so other indexed uh, purpose. Uh, articles and even Scopus also one should uh, be cautious that one should not get tempted to publish uh, in the paid journals because and so what what happens is that UGC has compromised a lot on this and then now it is refining uh, re re refining uh, uh, its uh, list and same thing has happened with the Scopus Scopus also actually is compromised a lot and then that's what you see that so the list is being revised every year. Uh, and uh, accordingly, it is either cutting down or reducing or deleting it. No. So that's what I suggest to so every one of you. Uh, I mean, so those are actually going for, let it take some time. Even IET is far better than any scope or uh, any other. So that's why, like, so some people, so, so, some journals where there is no money involved in the sense it has some significance and the process is followed. And then you will get to know that whether my idea. Goes, idea has any value and then those values or the critics I should get back. So the peer review would really look at those and then that's where you no know, kind of suggestion onto my research work. Okay. Thank you, sir. We have one more question from Varsha Pawar. Uh, please give some guidelines regarding funding agencies which can be easily approached for research grants. Yeah, to be frank on this thing, mom. So yes, and so a couple of years back, and this uh, this used to be the usual scenario of any even individual institutions. Uh, um, if you write a proposal to the say university funding, that's where AICT you know suggests the university to to dis, uh, give uh, sort of you know, support uh, uh, to those affiliated institutions. That's one channel, mom. And uh, one more channel is that means you use the uh, DST. Are uh, served for BST, but then here there is a lot of restrictions because so one of my colleague is uh, witnessing the the difficulties. So these days more proposals are open for the multi university and multi country proposals. But as an individual, yes, uh, I, we should not discourage. But then yes, you can keep trying. But then before trying, what I suggest strongly that you should have worked out something and some uh, evidence of research must always be there with you. Only then you'll be entertained. Otherwise, uh, it's not possible to see somewhere, anywhere uh, close to by, close by me. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have many appreci appreciation messages coming up in the chat box. And along with that, I find one question. Uh, it's a request to share the PPT to the mail ID so that it will be useful for future reference. Uh, 
Uh, I think with this, uh, we have uh, completed the questions at the Google Meet. I would request our student representatives, Arpita and uh, Sanskriti, to take up if any questions uh, from YouTube live session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Go yes. Uh, Arpita and Sanskriti. Uh, do we have any questions from YouTube channel? Okay. Yeah, if there are any questions, yes, so we can quickly take up ones. Yes, I'm open. So otherwise, uh, anyway, I, I think, think can, yes, yeah. yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I think there are no questions from the YouTube channel uh, chat boxes. Uh, thank you very much once again for this wonderful session and a very informative session, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, all the participants. So just be curious about your research. That's what uh, the last message is. Anyway, I'm there. So till the uh, end of this session. So maybe I think uh, along with uh, Dr. Uh, uh, that's it, sir. I think we can even take up some questions. Okay. Over to you. Okay. Uh, over to you, Rupaja. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. All the participants, there will be a break of five minutes. Please join the session after five minutes. Thank you so much.
Dear participants, the next session, the research in mathematics, challenges and opportunities, will be going to be a full of interactive session. So participants are welcome to ask more and more questions and queries on that. Thank you.
Good afternoon everyone. After this short break, I welcome you all to the second session of our webinar. The topic for session 2 is research in mathematics challenges and opportunities. I would now hand over to Suma ma'am. Welcome back to all the participants for the second session research in mathematics challenges and opportunities. This session focuses particularly on research in mathematics aims at enriching our participants knowledge about the challenges and opportunities in the field when we have an expert with us to speak on the topic i think you all are waiting for uh, listening to the uh, resource person so i would love to introduce our today's speaker dr narendra kumar dasre Dr Narendra Kumar Dasre is an associate professor in applied mathematics at DY Patil Groups Ramdev Ramrao Adik Institute of Technology Nerul Navi Mumbai he holds a doctorate degree in the field of applied mathematics from KBC North Maharashtra University Jalgaon he is actively involved in extensive research in pure and applied mathematics and engineering equipped with 17 years of teaching experience he is often invited as an area expert in various reputed institutions he has authored and reviewed 10 national and international books and published 11 research papers in journals of national and international repute he has also introduced magic transform also named as dasre gujaratri transform He is a member of editorial boards for many international journals. He is associated with many professional bodies of national and international fame. His area of interests are image processing, topology, number theory and applied mathematics. He has been a resource person for number of seminars, conferences and STTPs. He is also the president of the Engineering Mathematics Teachers Society India. Sir, we are really happy to have you as an expert speaker for today's webinar. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for a nice introduction. I hope uh, I'm audible. Yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, this uh, webinar is about uh, the research, uh, how and why. Yeah. Uh, so I was uh, listening to the previous speaker, and uh, he has uh, given you an idea about uh, the research, uh, how, uh, why, 
some of uh, the ideas uh, he has given. So basically, I would like to have uh, this session to be interactive. So whatever the questions are there in your mind, I will like to know, and then uh, I like to answer your queries more. Yeah, so that's why I don't have any presentation today. I just want to talk to you. I just want to resolve your queries, and I just want to show you uh, what you want to see. Yeah, so uh, I want uh, you to unmute yourself, and then please uh, ask your questions. I am ready with your, the answers for you. So I want uh, this, as I said earlier, this is to be the interactive. So whatever uh, you want to know, okay, I'm there to help you. I'm uh, there to satisfy your query. Okay, so please uh, feel free to ask the questions. Because it happens that many times uh, we, when we do our uh, post-graduation, it happens that what to do next. Okay, or uh, how uh, to take up the research. And uh, nowadays it is necessary uh, to have uh, the job as an assistant professor. Either you must qualify in it set or uh, you must have the PhD degree according to the 2009 norms and revised to uh, 2016 and 18 norms. Okay, so nowadays everybody is uh, looking for a how to do a PhD or how to do a research, where to do research. Okay, so... If uh, you have any query related to this or uh, you want to know anything about this, so I request you to have the question so I can answer your query. Sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, let me start with my query. Okay. The question, yeah, the topic itself is the research in mathematics, challenges and opportunities. The first question comes in my mind, how to start research in mathematics? Do I need to go for pure mathematics or applied mathematics or interdisciplinary relevance between them? Yeah, uh, that's great. Okay, so uh, when we consider uh, to do the research, okay, um, your query is uh, very nice, sir. Yeah, so what we have to do, uh, do we have to consider pure mathematics, applied mathematics, or interdisciplinary? Okay, so uh, what happens is up to, uh, uh, or up to our post-graduation, we mostly see mathematics, and uh, we uh, see that uh, mathematics uh, does not have any applications uh, in any field. Okay, but that is not the truth. Okay, so the truth is that, Mathematics has the wide range of applications. Okay, so only thing is that we need to identify. Okay, and uh, every piece of mathematics, uh, we call it as pure or we call it as applied. That doesn't matter. Okay, so though you start your research in uh, pure, okay, uh, anyway it is going to be applied somewhere. So for example, uh, we see the group theory. Okay, and we uh, think that the group theory may not have uh, the applications. Uh, yeah, but uh, it has uh, the wide uh, range of applications in coding theory. Yeah, so your code is never a code if it is not a good code. Yeah, and uh, this is the background. So we always think that uh, group theory and algebra is going to be very pure, but uh, no, it has an application. So you can start from any point. Okay, that goes to application. Only thing is that we have to fill the gap from the pure to applied. Okay. And if you are able to give an application of the idea that you pursue, then it becomes a greater research. Okay. Then it becomes a good one. So it doesn't matter where do you start. Okay. It matters where do you end. Okay. So always there are applications of mathematics. We need to pursue that applications. Nowadays, people like more applications. Yeah, please uh, have the question. Dear participants, I would request once again to have the more and more questions so that this session will be very much interactive and fruitful. Thank you. So, Jyoti Danke ma'am has uh, raised the question. If paper uh, selected for presentation in the conference, then how 
we will assure it uh, will publish in given journal. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, Ma'am, if your paper is accepted in a conference, okay, so uh, possibly they might have uh, given you the idea at the beginning only that uh, the paper selected will be uh, published in the particular journals or in the conference proceeding. Okay. So it happens that the person who is organizing that conference or the organization uh, who is uh, organizing that uh, con particular conference, okay, they have already tied up uh, with some certain journals. Okay, and when it goes to journal, uh, the paper has to again uh, go through the review process once again according to the journal policy. And then uh, if it is good according to the journal policy, obviously your paper will be published in the journal. And uh, if you don't want to go to the journal, then definitely your paper will be published by the organizer itself as a conference proceeding. Okay, if they are publishing, because there are several conferences, uh, those uh, do not publish the paper. Okay, so that is also the thing. Sir, here, uh, sir, yes, uh, uh, some sometimes there is written in the conference voucher ki uh, not limited to there is the topic uh, many four or five topics are there and there is written ki uh, topic not limited to so if yeah. we sending the paper in, uh, from another field so how yeah. we will uh, if we send the paper obviously ki they, there are no, no any journal uh, yeah. two or four because two or three journals they tie up with the journals and they are selected yeah. for the related relevant topic and uh, yeah. there is written ki not limited so not yeah. limited with the topic then uh, uh, we assure ki our paper will not select how we come to know because the uh, so yes uh, that limitation is uh, with the organizer of the conference. Uh, if they get the proper uh, reviewers for your paper, suppose it is uh, out of uh, the track. Okay, so sometimes they say that uh, these are the tracks, and uh, but uh, they say not limited to. Uh, your query is right. Okay, but if your uh, paper is not within the track, okay, and they do not have the reviewer uh, for your paper then it becomes difficult for the organizer also whether to accept that paper or whether to reject that paper. Yeah. So it depends on whether the reviewers are available in uh, that field in which uh, you have submitted the paper or not. And uh, then if the reviewers are available, they will try for the reviewers. Okay. So if reviewers are available, uh, they will uh, send that uh, to the reviewers and uh, depending on the reviewers' uh, comment, they will accept or reject. Okay. But if reviewers are not available, then it becomes difficult for the organizers also. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. I hope, uh, yeah, I, hope I, I have answered your query. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. sir, I am a beginner. Uh, what are the journal I want to look at in yes. mathematics? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Okay. So, uh, the uh, question I'll uh, better reframe it, how to select a journal, okay. So, first of all, what we have to do is, uh, we have to uh, find what is our area, okay. So, that means uh, we follow AMS classification, AMS 2010 classification. So, we classify our area and then uh, depending on our classification, because we are better to judge in which area we are uh, doing our work. Okay, so uh, for mathematics. The sir, pure mathematics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am talking about mathematics only. Yes, I am talking about mathematics. mathematics only. So in mathematics, there are uh, ninety-nine uh, areas listed in uh, AMS, and then uh, the zero is the general mathematics. Hmm. Okay, so American Mathematical Society, we follow that nomenclature from the American Mathematical Society. Okay, so there are ninety-nine uh, areas restricted, and uh, zero is for the general mathematics. If you are not able to identify the area, then you put zero. Okay. But in again uh, that uh, 99 areas, you can refine your search. Okay. So, AMS nomenclature is of five digits. Okay. So, first two are uh, the, the numbers. Middle is the alphabet. as alphanumeric code. And then last two again are the uh, numerals. Okay. So, this way uh, you will have uh, your research area in mathematics again. Okay, so in mathematics also you may have number theory, you may have topology, you may have algebraic topology, you may have 
the recreational mathematics you may have numerical analysis in again numerical analysis you may have ordinary differential equation then partial differential equation so many areas are there they are refined okay so for example the first area will be uh, the core area will be differential equation so the nomenclature is 65 and then after that you will have whether it is ordinary differential equation whether it is a partial differential equation and uh, like that so first you need to identify your area in which area you are working okay yes. then once you identify your area according to the ams classification okay now you need to refine your search to the journals okay so when we search actually for our mathematicians uh, we follow ugc care list okay so what we have to do is uh, go to ugc care uh, ugc care list and then uh, find out the journals and in that journals again so journal name is acta numerica okay so for example the journal name is acta numerica so yes, yes. then in acta numerica we have to go to that page to of the acta numerica and see whether it accepts our area or not okay so if it accepts our area that is a journal for you if it doesn't accept your area then you have to go and search for the another uh, so for example if your uh, work is related to uh, the differential equation then you can go for nonlinear uh, dynamics theory, uh, then uh, stability and uh, stability theory so ndst okay there you can find the area written as uh, the differential equation okay or if you do not find uh, your area there again go to the next journal for example i'll go to applied mathematical sciences by hikari okay so go to the on the website of the hikari and see what areas they accept okay and according to this if uh, your area of research matches with the area of the journal that accept then uh, that is a perfect journal for you and you can submit your article to that journal thank you thank you very much sir thank you welcome sir any other query please sir Sir, I am Professor Mansur yes, from Jamkandi. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, I want to ask you, please explain some uh, uh, Google Scholar, uh, what is this H-index, I-10 index. Okay, okay. What, what exactly the meaning of citations? We are very poor regarding this, sir. That's it. No, no problem, sir. No problem. Whatever your query is, I am there to solve. No problem, sir. <laughs> please, sir. <laughs> okay, okay. So, you want to know about the H-index and uh, I-index? Okay, I-10 uh, index. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, if you have uh, 10 research papers, okay, okay, then uh, out of this 10 research paper, suppose there are three research papers which have more than three citations. Okay, suppose uh, you have uh, 10 research papers and uh, uh, you have three papers with more than three citations. Okay. Then uh, your uh, index, H index is 3. Okay. So your H index becomes 3 because you have 3 papers having more than 3 citations. So your H index is 3. Now uh, we come to I10 index. So I10 index means how many research articles you have published with more than 10 citations. Okay. So that is called I10 index. Okay. So this is how uh, the Google does indexing. Okay, so I hope uh, I answered your query, sir. Yeah. Any other uh, question, please? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have published the uh, 10 to 12 papers uh, offline, sir. That is not oh. in uh, ISBN, it has. Okay. Not ISSN. Whether okay. that the same articles have to be uploaded in that site or not? Uh, you have published your uh, articles in uh, ah. journals, right? Uh, journal ah, journals, sir. Yeah, sir. Okay. Okay. So, are these journals indexed in uh, some indexing site? Oh. Okay. So, for example, uh, when we consider a journal, okay, so ah. in uh, our field in mathematics, uh, we have to consider two things. Okay. So, one is always uh, see that whether that journal is indexed in uh, math side or mathematical reviews. Okay. This is the first thing. Second thing, uh, whether it is indexed in Scopus. Okay. And the third thing, whether it is indexed in Zendra Black Math. Okay. So, these three parameters you have to see. 
Okay, if uh, this is indexed in any one of this, okay, then directly your table will be uh, coming to the Google Scholar. Okay, so there is no problem. Okay, directly uh, your paper will be listed. Okay, if uh, your paper is not listed, then uh, please see that whether uh, your journal where you have published the papers are indexed in Google Scholar or not, because Google Scholar also has its own uh, index. Okay. So, if your journals are indexed in Google Scholar, then also we actually uh, get that paper. And uh, you open your Google ID and then uh, uh, make an account on Google Scholar and see that your papers are directly uh, attracted or not. Okay, so if your papers are directly attracted, that means your journals are indexed. Okay, if they are directly attracted, that means uh, your journals are not indexed. Okay, okay sir. This way we can find sir, out. Sir, what about the RC ID? No, sir. RC ID, what is, what is the, yes. what exactly? Yes, yes, RC ID, correct. Uh, so now uh, that RC ID is going to Pubbins. Sir. Okay, so the RC ID is not uh, now going to Pubbins. See, uh, we have uh, the different uh, research communities. Okay. Perhaps. So we have uh, the research community, like one of uh, the research gate, okay, where you can find most of the researchers. Okay. Second, we have uh, the Archive, now it has gone to Pabang. Okay. So these uh, IDs actually they get your paper from Scopus and uh, from uh, the Math Signet or Mathematical Reviews. Okay. So that means they pull your data from either Scopus or either the math side which is American, uh, the American Mathematical Society. So if uh, they are able to pull the data, then uh, your credibility is shown in terms of the papers there. Okay. Yes. yes. Sir, any can I access that RC ID? Uh, sir, uh, without our permission, uh, we cannot access, but uh, it can be linked to Scopus directly. Okay, okay, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Yeah. Any other question? Sir, there, yes, is, a sir. there is a question in uh, YouTube live stream uh, from Ashish Kulkarni. Okay. Why, okay. The question uh, it is very easy. Like, why there is so much importance to A plus grades when applying for any research scholarship instead of how many papers published or how effectively individual research work previously done at graduation? Uh, pardon, sir. What was the first part of the question? Yeah, okay. Let me read out once again. Why there is yeah. so much importance to A plus grade when, apply, when applying for any research scholarship instead of how many papers published, how effectively individual research work done previously? Yeah. <laughs> um, sir, uh, I'd like to answer this uh, like uh, see, when we uh, try to apply for uh, research scholarships or uh, when we uh, uh, try to think of uh, this, again, so most of the time it happens that uh, if uh, your uh, research papers are uh, published in a well-reputed journal, again, and uh, if the panel thinks that you are capable, again, the, the panelists are mostly from uh, IITs and IISs, Okay, so if they think uh, that uh, you are capable, then uh, they will allow. And most of the times, these scholarships are given in IIC or IIT, so most of the time. Yeah. But uh, if you have a good uh, research uh, score, then also we can think of uh, it. Sir, I think there is a question from uh, one madam, Jyoti Dhankit. Ma'am, please, go ahead. Sir, I want to know uh, yeah. ki, how come how it becomes easy ki our paper we have to check using uh, Turnitine plagiarism or uh, Ithentin, Ithentic plagiarism. It is, hi, it, it, these are very difficult to uh, check researcher uh, their papers yeah. through this yeah. turnitine this is very difficult task yes, yes. So it becomes easy sir yeah so actually uh, 
it is not necessary that you uh, have to check it okay when you submit uh, your paper to any conference or any journal okay uh, it is uh, their uh, part that they will uh, first check plagiarism okay but i also deny this word plagiarism okay it is not the plagiarism it is the similarity okay it is not the plagiarism it is the similarity and uh, i'll uh, tell you the data from uh, the stringer itself okay uh, the similarity the plagiarism in the world is just 2% okay the plagiarism in the world this is the stringer's data okay the plagiarism in the world is just 2% okay most of the times it is the similarity okay and this similarity if you want to check okay you need to uh, go through that software which considers the similarity content but then you must have the membership either uh, you must have the institutional membership or uh, you must have the individual membership then only you are able to check uh, through that or uh, if your colleague has uh, the membership then he can check it okay otherwise uh, it's not open it's a paid software so that's why uh, either uh, we must have a membership or uh, we must have someone who has a membership okay. sir one more question can i ask yes ma'am surely you can ask absolutely many questions no problem <laughs> uh suppose there are uh, some faculties are telling like this ki this paper was in journal which was in previously in ugc but now it is not in it, now it is uh, in uh, discontinued so how yes. uh, how the faculties uh, faculties because some if we are in r and d cell and the some yes. faculties are telling like this ki this paper my paper was in the previously in that that journal that that, that yes. journal two years ago this yes. was in ugc but now yes. it is not in discontinued disconnected or fake journal so yes. how we come to know ki it yes. was before two years uh, it was in ugc and now it is disconnected so yes. there was <laughs> so uh, what happens is always uh, when you quote your paper okay you must quote uh, the ugc care list number of the journal okay so when you write uh, your paper that uh, you claim your paper in your cv or uh, in your uh, uh, resume you must write uh, the journal number ugc care list number of that journal then it is considered uh, on the day that your paper was published it was there okay and after it is discontinued so that is not your fault so uh, it may and uh, this ugc care list is a dynamic okay so it is not fixed it is dynamic so in 2016 it was different in 2017 it was different in 2018 it was different and now in 1920 it is different okay so it is a dynamic list so you can claim at that time when you published your paper that journal was listed and the list number was this yes sir so recently we can't check uh, in current website no, previous uh, website that we can't that number was, yes yes so that's why I, i said when you uh, want to publish your paper first what you have to do is identify your area then go to the care list find out the journals okay and then uh, you proceed to the journal okay so that uh, you will not have this problem later and once you have uh, the journal in the care list then uh, you can uh, find out the number and then you have submitted to that journal if it gets published you can claim that number yes after 2 years this becomes discontinued no ma'am but at the time when you have published the paper it was there no so at the time when yes. you submit the paper you need to uh, check at the time only starting only so how we uh, assure na ki before 2 years uh, it was in ugc list there is no cross checking ma'am okay sir Th that was yes, the question yes. because uh, in phd yeah. work there are 5 yeah, yeah. years 6 years and before 4 years if we published paper in ugc and then it is now now it is not in the ugc because 2 uh, years uh, back uh, this ugc site now updated na in previous yes, yes. there was different yes there, there were some so, many journals was there yes yes so the, this we are facing this issues no because if you want to go back dated there is no back dated data available with ugc also okay so that when we submit the journal and uh, submit to the journal and when we get our paper published 
at that time only you must uh, note down your uh, ugc care list number of the journal okay that sir you can not wait okay sir thank you yeah very good sir yes sir yeah i have a one query uh, yes, as as a researcher when you publish a paper then yes, we will have in a google scholar as well as a research gate account okay yes. when, when we see the our papers on the both the platform but there is a yes. huge difference between those citations yeah google scholar count is totally different citation count and it doesn't have any with the same paper itself for the research yes. gate so why this, yes. this this disparity or something you know the case yes. a confusion which one has to be you know uh, taken as a account yes yes sir uh, what happens is uh, if your uh, paper those who are citing your paper that journal is uh, pulled by google then it's uh, okay okay or that article is pulled by uh, the research gate then it will give you citation if that article which cite your paper is not pulled then uh, it will not count your uh, citation so that's what the problem with the the research gate and the google so what google does is if uh, your the paper citing your paper is uploaded anywhere then it will pull and then it will uh, credit your citation okay but if that paper is not pulled then uh, you cannot find for example i'll give you uh, some okay so for example uh, we have the vidarbha bulletin of uh, vidarbha bulletin okay so it is something uh, bulletin of vidarbha mathematical society uh, like that okay so many people have published a research article in this uh, bulletin okay but this bulletin is offline okay it is not online so any article published in this bulletin is not pulled by any of the cite uh, citing uh, websites okay so if somebody cites your paper and publishes that paper in the bulletin of vidarbha mathematical society then uh, it will not get counted that citation will never uh, be pulled okay so you will never get the credit of that citation and even the person uh, who has published paper there okay will never get uh, his paper online or never get uh, his citation online okay so this is also a problem when we uh, when we just go for uh, the print media or uh, if it is not indexed Thank you. Welcome, sir. Yeah. So this is Dr. Mohan. I think if I can uh, add, you know, some of the inputs over this. Yeah. Sure, so sir, sir. yeah, here, yeah. So what sir said is was exactly correct. It's a search engine uh, problem. Basically, you know, yeah. Google is you know very vast and it can actually go to any inch by inch of data and then can capture. That's why there always Google Scholar citations are always ever highest, ever highest. Yeah. but then when it comes to accreditation bodies so the the citations uh, given because google scholar we can manipulate in the sense i can even you know quote even the 100 papers of other authors and i can still show that those are of mine so there is no control uh, i mean so there, there is something there is no authentication but then scopus citations and web of sciences uh, citations are those ones which are actually genuine and they have their own mechanism of capturing and uh, there is a, a less or no interference of the author where it can be manipulated so that's where the nirf will always uh, acquire the data only from the scopus uh, by through uh, official mail and uh, will never consider the institute provided number of uh, citation to the papers and the same is the case with uh, <clears throat> so nac and nac i think yes so what uh, uh, jyoti ma'am asked is that yes so there is no need to worry as sir said that so till that year the count of your paper will always be counted and uh, beyond that yes it is no more so that's where you know so that ugc itself is cleared that yes or uh, even nac itself is cleared that so count of that year uh, will include that all those journals which are listed on ugc but my humble request not to refer the uh, ugc right away is because there's a lot of revision happening in the sense the list is being revised maybe uh, to an extent to the scopus is well accepted globally and uh, ugc actually within india so would be better uh, slightly looking little beyond that is uh, scopus on uh, a bigger uh, aspect i think scopus is also getting revised and trying to reach a ci level 
but then that's uh, that is always difficult difficult because for a beginners to write a paper of that level and all that is difficult in many friends i think you know everybody should accept it that is where uh, the issue comes in so that's where the scopus is a, a scopus uh, every author even without knowing your own if you have at least one paper scopus indexed uh, journal paper then you must have already uh, have one uh, unique id created under your author uh, author name so you can just go to scopus and search for author and then there you put in your name and then affiliation then you will see the number of publications which are actually under scopus indexed where you, you cannot manipulate this number because they 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 have their own uh, link up of the scopus index journals so that is actually very authenticated that's where so whenever we quote for any accreditation bodies we provide both the numbers both the google scholar as well as scopus <laughs> because that yeah, is okay. where one can see the comparison Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other query, please. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, yes, sir. As a PG student, sir, ah, uh, what should we means? Ah, uh, what should be our approach towards the research, and ah, uh, what pre pre requisites we should follow ah uh, to do to go into the uh, research, sir? Please guidance. Correct, correct. Okay. So your question, I'll rephrase as ah. Uh, Uh, right uh, how to start the research okay so uh, if uh, you want to start the research first uh, what you have to do is uh, you have to find your likings of the subject so which subject you like most okay or uh, which subject you are thorough with okay uh, so if you know that uh, any particular subject i like most or uh, i am uh, thorough with this subject and then uh, you must start uh, reading Uh, advanced reading on that subject okay yeah. so once you start advanced reading on that subject then uh, you must narrow your search okay which area in that subject uh, you are interested and then uh, start finding the research articles on that particular area okay so you will get thousands of research articles so do you have to go to thousands no okay so what to do is just uh, see that the title of uh, the article if it's uh, interesting then open that article read the abstract only okay so read the abstract of that uh, article only and if it creates interest uh, that you need to look for more information or uh, you like the idea presented in the abstract then Uh, follow that article thoroughly. Okay, if you do not like the uh, you like title but you do not like the, the abstract of the article, then uh, forget about it. Go for the text. Okay, so this way uh, you have to start and you have to proceed. And once you have uh, four five articles on the same and similar idea or area, okay, then try to read this research articles thoroughly. Okay, so reading an article, okay, it's not that uh, easy. So it's not that uh, in one hour I'll uh, finish it, or in uh, two days I'll finish it, or in a week I'll finish it. Okay, so be patient. Okay, this is the. idea hello i hope i am audible yes sir you are audible okay so uh, uh, if uh, you are able to understand uh, the idea presented in one article okay then uh, go for the another and then uh, try to understand uh, the ideas presented in this four five articles which uh, you have selected and then after that you find out what is the loophole okay so if there is a loophole that you have to plug in and that is your research problem and there you can do the research okay thank you sir thank you so welcome. much welcome welcome next question please Sir, sir, 
Yeah, looking into the present scenario, nowadays, yeah. like, uh, we will be looking for interdisciplinary relevance. Like, let it be your topic, image processing. It could yes. be a wavelength theory transform or it could be a coding theory, cryptography, yes. where the technology and the mathematical ideas will get blended with each other. So are yes. we as a researcher, are we looking for such opportunities or we will have to go back to our traditional topology algebra with a core concept? What exactly we need to select a path as a researcher yes. if you want to begin? Yeah. So uh, that's why the point starts with the uh, interest. Okay. So if you want to see the mathematics, then go for applied mathematics. Okay. If you want to enjoy the just uh, mathematical concept, then go to the pure mathematics. But uh, nowadays, when you go for any interview or uh, when uh, what uh, the engineering colleges uh, expect, uh, you should be relevant to the real life problems. Okay, so it is not that mathematics is not relevant to the real life problems. The only thing is that we have a gap. Okay, so for example, if I know the differential equation, but I don't know what is the application of the differential equation, then it becomes difficult. Okay, so that's why uh, we should know the mathematics as well as the application. And uh, as uh, you have pointed out, sir, if it is always better if we have an application or we go for applied or we go for interdisciplinary. Even though some people say that there is no mathematics in biology, okay, but uh, I disagree with that, okay. So there are uh, there is a lot of scope uh, in uh, biology also for mathematicians, and uh, if you go with uh, this kind of uh, collaborative work or uh, this kind of interdisciplinary work, it adds more value actually. So that's what uh, I feel. Thank I you. Hope so. I answered your query, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Next, please. Sir, one more question. Can I ask? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Sir, one question that is, ki, suppose there is a research papers are available and uh, yeah. there are some equations are solved in that yeah. research paper and one uh, or two code, uh, programming code uh, is there, some link is there given. Okay, yeah. so if uh, any other researcher, can we use that uh, code and um, uh, for a new, new, new equations, for their equations, can we use that program? It will be uh, plug it. Uh, uh, it is uh, this code is not given in the paper, but uh, okay. the link is given. Suppose so, okay. can we you can use the, this uh, code and uh, we can change this code? Is it uh, is it correct or wrong? No. Uh, if you use any any equation or any code and you cite uh, that person, okay, that I am using uh, the code generated by so and so, then it is not considered to be a plagiarism. Okay, what is mean by the plagiarism? Plagiarism means uh, somebody else has that idea and you are uh, framing uh, that, that idea owns to you. That is the plagiarism. Okay, but if you give credit to the person from whom uh, you are referring the idea, then it is not a plagiarism. Okay, the next thing is that if you are modifying the code, okay, then uh, modification is your, but for the code, you can cite always that uh, from this paper, uh, we uh, the idea is presented in this paper and then uh, we have modified it. That's not a plagiarism. Because you are modifying, so modification is not a plagiarism. But if you do not cite the person who has given that code, then it becomes plagiarism. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, next query, please. Uh, what are uh, somebody has put the question? Uh, what are the opportunities? Hello, hello, sir. Hello, you yes, you are audible. I think there is a problem. Uh, sir, from uh, the uh, sorry, sir, end. I think there is a connection yeah, problem. What do you have? Yeah, yeah uh, okay. what we have uh, is, uh, if we go for interdisciplinary research, always uh, it opens you the new area. Okay, so for example, uh, I uh, when I was in uh, post-graduation, 
So I had studied the computational mathematics, okay, and then uh, when I uh, joined uh, as a assistant professor, then I started uh, in the field of applied uh, on uh, particularly the image processing. <coughs> so what are the parts studied in uh, image processing? So actually, uh, we need to understand what is the signal, okay, and then uh, we need to understand the dimension of the signal, okay. So once you understand the basic. Now, <coughs> this dimension concept comes from our vector spaces. Okay, so basically, we have to interrelate our uh, mathematical knowledge that we have studied earlier, and then uh, what we are uh, going to solve. Okay, so first we need to understand the signal. But uh, when I say signal, uh, the mathematicians say that I don't know this. Okay, it's totally wrong. Every mathematician knows the, what is signal. Okay, only the thing is that we don't call it as signal; we call it as function. Okay, so when I say f of x in engineering, it becomes x of t, which is going to be a signal. Okay, so the way of representation is different. Okay, but if I consider the mathematical concept, it is going to be uh, same. Okay, and that's why what we have to do is uh, we need to apply this. Okay, we need to go with the basic concept, and then uh, we can uh, have a good opportunities. So, for example, if I go with the signal process, uh, this. Image processing, which is a two-dimensional signal now. Okay, so signal is f of x. If I consider two-dimensional signal, f of x, y, when x and y are independent. Okay, and now what are the applications of image processing? That all our area will be open. Okay, so starting from our attendance system that uh, we do. Okay, either uh, we scan our face or we scan our thumb. Okay, that all industry is open then. Okay, so only thing is that we should be capable of uh, doing that task. But uh, most of the times, then uh, if you know the programming languages uh, like uh, MATLAB, uh, which is a paid software actually, uh, Scilab we have, MATLAB we have, then we have Python. Nowadays, uh, mostly used is Python. So if you are familiar with these uh, languages uh, and uh, your mathematical knowledge, then uh, you have many areas open for you. Hello, hello, yes. sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I want to ask a question, sir. Can we uh, can we show this uh, practically? We can show that uh, students that there are the uh, applications of mathematics in engineering by uh, yeah. preparing some models also. Yeah, definitely we can show, ma'am. Definitely. Okay. So as I started my lecture, saying that the mathematics has an applications always. But we don't know, so we have to fill that gap. Okay. So, for example, I'll take an uh, example of an uh, electrical branch or electronics. Or uh, so, first year we have a subject called uh, BWE. Okay. Yes, sir. Or uh, basic yes, sir. Uh, electronics and electrical engineering. Electronics. Huh? Okay. So, uh, what that subject is? Uh, that subject uses the basic knowledge of uh, the or basic analysis of uh, the masses. That is the Thevenin theorem, Norton theorem. Uh, and what are the basic components okay we have we have three basic components okay either it is the inductor or it is the resistor or it is a capacitor so these are the three basic components okay now if i write the mathematical model of this it reduces to a differential equation so basically it reduces a differential equation and now uh, if this is a problem which reduces to the differential equation it's an application Okay, so whatever the solution uh, we give, that will uh, be followed by the circuit. Okay, if it is, if uh, the person is from mechanical engineering, okay, then this system of uh, the capacitor, resistor, and the uh, inductor is uh, substituted uh, by its uh, equivalent spring and mass system. Okay, so if we know the spring and mass system, then again you will get the second order differential equation. Okay, and then again it is an application. So uh, there are uh, always an application uh, of the mathematics, so always we can show definitely yes, this is the application of mathematics. And even though in computer and uh, IT, uh, we can show it. Okay, so sometimes uh, uh, if uh, the person is claiming, uh, if I uh, dare to say this, if any engineer is uh, saying that there are no application of mathematics in my branch, then I dare again, he has not studied engineering. Yes, sir. Actually, yeah. we had decided to make uh, some uh, mathematics uh, labs uh, in our college. 
Yes, that's great. You can show the applications. Definitely. Yes. We have to prepare some models, mathematical models. Yeah, yeah. Starting from the simple pendulum. Okay. Yeah, now, yeah. yeah, starting from the simple pendulum, we have a concept called inverted pendulum. Uh, most of the people in engineering also, they are working on the uh, inverted pendulum. So, what this system is, inverted pendulum has uh, many applications. Okay. So, we know simple pendulum. Simple pendulum has the its end at the, uh, it is uh, tied to the support. And then uh, the simple pendulum is uh, having uh, the oscillations. Okay. Make it inverted. Okay, then the, the pendulum is uh, will be having oscillations like this. Okay, and uh, the fixed uh, support. What this gives actually this stabilizes all the robots. Yeah. This this concept stabilizes all the robots, and uh, the stability is uh, very important. So what we are doing is we are trying to stabilize. Okay, using uh, the gyroscopic sensors. Okay, and using this sensor we are uh, trying to stabilize this robot. And actually, uh, they, there are uh, this principle is used in many many applications. Yes. Okay, starting from uh, the driving, uh, say uh, the cars and all, driverless cars and all. So there are so many applications. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, there is a one question from my organizing team by yeah. Pro Professor Harshida. Uh, what are what are the opportunities in pursuing research mathematics? I would just reframe it instead of opportunities along with opportunity. What are the challenges in pursuing research in mathematics? Yes, oh, yes. Okay. So uh, the challenge is the first basic challenge is finding your uh, interest. Okay. Once you got your interest, then uh, find the articles in that particular area. After that find the proper university. I will always suggest find the proper university. Do not go to any university which claims that in two years they will complete your PhD. Okay. Do not go to such university which claims that in two years or three years they will complete your PhD. Okay. So, uh, finding the proper university. I will always suggest that go to the state universities or the central universities. Okay. Do not go to uh, the universities uh, when they claim, uh, okay, then two years or three years they will complete your, uh, no, that degree will not have any benefit. But most of the organization do not accept that degree, okay. Uh, if you go with uh, some, I don't want to take the names, but uh, I, I can tell you, okay. So there are the universities who claim, uh, so the next challenge is to find the proper university. Okay, and after finding the proper university, okay, find the guide of your interest. Okay, so there are two things. Either you find the guide who is interested in your topic, okay, or you get into, get into interest where guide has that uh, topic. Okay, so it is either way. Because sometimes uh, the guide has a problem and uh, he wants that uh, some uh, person will come and help him in the solving the problem. Or uh, if you go with your problem, uh, then uh, he may like your problem and then uh, uh, he can allow you to uh, do your research. Okay. So these are the basic uh, challenges. And then after writing the article and then uh, publishing it, that is also the thing. Yeah. Thank you, sir. In continuation with that, there is a one more query from Amol Mani. Uh, yeah. Sir, please give tips to write effective research manuscript and research proposals. Yeah, okay. So, uh, when uh, we write uh, the research article, okay, so what we have to do is uh, we have to first target uh, where we are going to submit this. Okay, so first uh, select a uh, journal select a conference okay and when you are done with the journal or the conference then uh, they will provide you the template okay <clears throat> according to the template of uh, the template or format of the journal or the conference uh, you have to prepare your article okay and uh, while uh, if i want to make it more effective okay please refer a good number of articles Okay, so that uh, it shows that uh, you have done a good work 
and then uh, you are writing this article. Yeah, that will be the good thing. <clears throat> Um, yeah, somebody uh, write references in a paper which are uh, like uh, end note or uh, please suggest. No, uh, that's what I said. Uh, what you have to do is uh, you have to follow the template given by the <coughs> journal or the conference because every journal has the different uh, uh, idea to write the references. Okay, some journal accept uh, in uh, the alphabetical order. Okay, some journal accept uh, first uh, the journal article, then the conference article, then uh, the books referred. Okay, so that's why uh, we cannot say that there is a fixed order. Okay, so that's why we have to write uh, the references according to the requirement of the journal or the conference template. And uh, most of the thing, uh, most of the times, all the journal they ask to prepare the manuscript in latex. So if you write in LaTeX, uh, it will be more easy for you uh, to get that uh, list generated directly. Uh, yeah, uh, Jyoti Mama, as I said, uh, we need to go with the template. Okay, um, uh, we cannot uh, have that uh, to work for us. Better, uh, I'll suggest go with the template. Don't use any app. Uh, no need. Sir, for uh, thesis, uh, thesis, uh, we are writing thesis, na. So there is yes. no template. So uh, there is not any template for uh, uh, in the university. So which template we have to use? Or um, there is Mendeley. Uh, is there generally some uh, using uh, EndNote? So uh, references uh, automatically generated, na. Uh, I'm yes, not yes. talking about sequence. Oh. Yeah. So what you can do is, yes, ma'am. Uh, what you can do is. Uh, I will again suggest that use some template. Okay, if there is no template in the, any uh, particular university you are talking about, then I'll suggest you uh, to use the template. Uh, if you want to use the template, I'll uh, suggest you use a Macquarie University. Okay, most which, of the people follow that. Which Macquarie, which? Macquarie University. You okay, can sir. Google and uh, then you can get this. So most of the people use that template. If you don't have. Okay, and then uh, if you use LaTeX, definitely you will get uh, that list generated. So, no need to use any app rather than Mandalay, EndNote. These are very specific apps. Okay, Mandalay, EndNote, these are very specific apps. But if you want to have the liberty with you, uh, just uh, generate your own list using LaTeX. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, next. Sir, good evening. Yeah. Sir, good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Dr. Arun, sir. I am asking a very, very basic question. Please don't mind. No problem, sir. No problem. Uh, what do you mean by research? What do you mean by research? How will you define it? Yes. yes, yes. So, nice question, sir. Okay. So, what do we know? There is always difference between research and innovation. Okay. So, some people uh, may mix with this uh, words also, research and uh, innovation. So, yes, research, the, the same, yeah. the same, the same. yes, the research means we are searching something in the either way. Okay, that is one uh, meaning we can have. And the innovation is what? We are creating something which is not there. Okay, so yes, that's yes, why... Yes. We uh, try to find something, okay, so which is there that we call as research, okay. And, and research uh, can be modification also, research can be modification also. Yes, yes, it can be modification but also. That's not the innovation, there. but not the innovation. Yeah, that's what I said, the innovation is something new that we create. Yes, sir, yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome, sir, welcome. Uh, sir, sir, I have a one question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, see, actually, suppose if I want to start a research, as a teacher, I have taken my career. My question yes. is, my question is, I know the yes. basic syllabus which is relevant to teach the students at the undergraduate yes. level. And yes. since 
since there is a, a the, the relevant i mean scenarios like this that we have to go through the research papers because we need to submit at the correct, for correct. the nac and other purposes okay correct, correct. now if i uh, yeah, i'm a beginner and in our msc courses we don't have that research papers writing like mtech or yami correct, correct. now if i want to start my journey of research and yes. research papers as per my knowledge it is just broadly classified into four categories like uh, review paper or the survey paper or critical okay. reviews or uh, comments and then original findings and exactly yeah. if i if yeah. i'm a beginner from where yeah. i need to start so uh, uh, i'll suggest uh, writing a uh, review uh, is not a easy job okay so writing review is uh, difficult okay a uh, survey uh, is always having a limitation okay so when you think of a survey it always has a limitation that uh, it may not be generalized but yes uh, you can uh, do some uh, survey work you can uh, take some uh, five to 10 uh, articles of the same area and then you can go for comparison in that uh, area okay so that is also fine and then as i suggested uh, if you have uh, uh, got some gap in referring this five six papers then you can plug in that gap that will become your research article so i'll suggest survey is the easiest way to start okay thank you sir yeah so one, one more question which is related to that as a, yes, as a teacher i have taken my job how yes. does this research will add into that you know in my uh, daily teaching a teaching profession how does it's going to be you know flourish the teaching profession what are the uh, benefits yes. apart from those benefits other benefits what are the actual yes. benefits i'm going to get while teaching correct correct so uh, what happens sir when we do research okay we refer books okay we refer research articles we refer the articles what is happening currently in the world and that's why if you have some more idea than your previous knowledge so definitely you are going to pass on this to student okay at that time may not uh, be that idea may not be fruitful for them or may not be uh, easy from the for the students to digest but definitely you know something more than their uh, daily books or uh, you know something more and you are going to add this to your students knowledge Okay, yeah, so that's why I think uh, these are the good benefits of uh, doing research, and uh, you will be always having the updated knowledge, whatever the field you choose. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, sir. Welcome, sir. So there are some uh, queries from uh, yes, sir. Yes, uh, participants. Analysts, sir. Yeah. So uh, what is the difference between the primary data and the secondary data? Yes. Okay. so primary data is also called as uh, raw data okay so raw data means uh, which is uh, extracted from the census directly okay and secondary data is also called as processed data okay so for example uh, this is more uh, statistical uh, theory uh, so what we have is uh, suppose uh, we are having some 10 sensors uh, i want to observe the particular uh, procedure and i have put some 10 sensors then this uh, Ten sensors are uh, feeding me the data. So, uh, for example, uh, we are all aware of uh, ECG, okay? As uh, sir also uh, said in the previous lecture, but are we aware of EEG? Okay. So, electroencephalograph. So, which is uh, actually noted uh, by using the device called OPAM. It is the difference between the two signals, okay? Operational amplifier, and then uh, the poles are attached on the head. and then uh, the difference is uh, noted in this course and then every moment uh, or every thought is uh, tracked uh, using this moment uh, directly i am getting from the sensor is going to be the raw data which is called primary data okay now the next step i am getting the difference Okay, so I am not getting the primary data now. I am getting the difference. So difference is obtained when I know the primary data and it is processed, and then I am getting the uh, data. So which is processed? So we call it as the secondary data. 
or uh, for example if i know uh, the data is given and uh, uh, the series okay is given uh, then uh, it is called the primary data and if i analyze it for what is going to be uh, the, the central tendencies of this data what are the uh, variances or uh, variance of this data what is the uh, standard deviation of this data then the, if these figures are given then it is going to be the central uh, this is going to be the secondary data okay and then uh, i hope uh, i answer your uh, query sir uh, then there is a question from uh, amol mane sir uh, sir it is difficult to understand the paper published in elsewhere uh, acs rcs publication while reading uh, yeah okay that's uh, correct okay so what i said is uh, see uh, in initial days okay it becomes uh, difficult to understand uh, the paper okay so what we have to do is uh, we don't have to hurry okay we don't have to mug up the things okay we have to understand this papers okay and it will definitely take time so it is not that uh, in one day or one hour i am able to get uh, any paper no okay definitely it will get time uh, it will take time uh, you need to give time so uh, sometimes it may take uh, one day sometimes it may take one week sometimes it may take three months also okay so for example i'll tell you a story okay Uh, when we were in uh, msc uh, we were having a project compulsory project based on the research article okay so that was the practice in uh, the north maharashtra university or now it is kbc north maharashtra university so all the students were given individual projects okay so individual project on uh, individual uh, research papers and uh, the time given was 6 months and what uh, was the task the task was to understand the paper and present it Okay, so that's what uh, we used to uh, do initially. They found one paper by uh, M. S. Saudari and J. S. Patil from uh, Shivaji University, Kolapur, and uh, another uh, paper was there from B. Uh, Krishna Murthy. Okay, so I wondered uh, that uh, the bounds given uh, for the topology. This was a paper on the topology, so the bound given on the topology was uh, not uh, so sharp. Okay, and then I was having always a theory that no. Uh, this can be sharper okay but at the time of msc i was not able to uh, get the answer okay so i uh, studied the paper uh, for uh, and uh, then uh, simplified it and uh, represented and then uh, my project was done because that was the only project to simplify the paper understand and present it okay so uh, that was done but i always I, i was having always a doubt that this bounds can be sharper okay and i was not able to get the idea okay and uh, that problem was solved in 2016 after 30 years okay so after 30 years that means i carried that problem in my mind for the 13 years and after 13 years uh, with uh, one of my colleague uh, dr pritam uh, gujarati i was able to solve that problem okay so this way it may take time okay may uh, may not be easy so you can solve in uh, a month two month three month or sometimes may carry may you have to carry uh, do that and that's why we need guide to phd and to do our phd we need guides because they know where to take the student yeah uh, welcome sir okay astro philosophy and uh, direct uh, phd uh, ph ed okay Sir, uh, Master of Philosophy, as per my knowledge, it is Yamphil, but uh, PH Ed, uh, I don't know, sir. So please, uh, can you, uh, uh, sir, uh, can you please unmute yourself and then ask this uh, question again? Sir, good afternoon. Yeah, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. What is the difference between Master of Philosophy and Direct PhD? direct phd yeah uh, so um, uh, what happens is see the roots both the roots are going to uh, give you the way through the research okay so master of philosophy uh, when we consider uh, we always call it as mini phd okay so when we go for mphil okay we call it always call it as mini phd where you have to do uh, the reference one uh, you have to understand the papers and you have to submit your dissertation okay so in yamphil you may or may not do the research okay in yamphil you may or may not do the research but in phd definitely you have to do the research 
that's the difference so i always encourage uh, people to go to research directly rather than uh, having the dilemma whether i want to do the research or not to do the research thank you sir thank you So, any other query, please? So, I hope uh, <coughs> I have answered uh, your uh, queries. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, sir, what are the trending topics in uh, linear algebra now? So, uh, linear algebra is a very vast subject. Okay. So, if you <laughs> Want to understand the applications of linear algebra? Okay. Uh, see, uh, what is uh, what, where, where we can take the linear algebra? So starting from the signal processing is again a linear algebra. Image processing is again a linear algebra. As I started with the uh, one dimension and two dimension, so obviously I have to be with the linear algebra. Okay, because I have to go to the vector spaces. Then uh, control theory. Okay, so there is a subject called control theory. Okay, this is again an application of the linear algebra because once you enter into this control theory, all the there are matrices and there are rank applications of rank nullity theorem. There are applications of eigenvalue, eigenvectors, and uh, so many. And the next uh, we, if we want to go to, then we have the data analysis, uh, dimension reduction. These all fields are having the applications of linear algebra. So if I uh, go with the data analysis, definitely it is. Nowadays we always hear the word data analysis, uh, then uh, big uh, big data, then uh, data science. These all are fields uh, applications of uh, only uh, this linear algebra. And then they feed. Once you do the data analysis, this is feed to the machine learning, and in machine learning, these are uh, considered. So we go with the data frames and all, and then that goes to the AI, so artificial intelligence, and then. Artificial intelligence works. So, basic machine behind this is linear algebra. So, you can have so many fields where you find the applications of linear algebra. Thank you, sir. Next question, please. So, uh, I hope uh, there is a question in uh, chat. Why mathematical equations are not considered in patent? Yeah. Okay. So uh, in patent, uh, mostly in our Indian uh, uh, patent laws, mostly the hardware is considered. So you must produce some hardware, but uh, definitely you can go for copyright. Okay. So I'll suggest you if you have some idea, then uh, make it in the algorithm form, and then you can go for copyright. Okay. So, in uh, India, the patent laws are like that, so they apply only for the hardware, not for uh, the intellectual uh, properties like the equations or algorithms. They are under the copyright. Okay. Uh, I will see, is there any other uh, question? How to use SPSS tools in and techniques in uh, research? Yeah, if you want to do the data related uh, research, then definitely these tools are very useful. Okay, so uh, it depends your uh, research area. If your research area is related to data, and then uh, these tools are uh, worth. Okay, if your area is not related to data, then uh, these uh, tools uh, will not be much useful. So, is there any other uh, query? So, yeah, please ask the query if you have any. Okay. Uh, that's great then. <laughs> I hope uh, I have answered uh, most of the queries. Yeah. Uh, welcome. So, I think <coughs> if there is any query, please. Uh, yeah. So, definitely, ma'am, uh, I'll, I'll take uh, any queries uh, related to this. Um, yeah, uh, definitely you can have it from uh, the organizers, definitely. Okay. So, 
Uh, is there, if there is any query, uh, I'll uh, like to answer it, or I'll like to fulfill uh, your curiosity. Uh, that's right. I hope uh, so. There is a uh, query. I hope now. Okay. Uh, that's great. Okay. Thank you. I uh, thank uh, the management of uh, place HOC uh, College of Engineering and Technology. I thank the principal sir, the HOD sir of uh, Humanity and uh, Basic Sciences. Uh, we thank you, the organizers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There uh, is not all theory uh, in the uh, day. So I, uh, I try to solve as much possible. Yeah. So if you have with us, no problem. Thank you, sir. One small announcement. Welcome, sir. Uh, welcome. Yeah, dear participants. Please submit all your queries to the email IDs which we have provided on the flyer. We will make sure, okay, we will forward those queries to the respective speakers and we will get back to you with all your queries sorted out. And we'll make sure that all your queries will be, you know, answered by our expert lecture, uh, speakers. Thank you. Simran. Thank you so much, Dr. Dasre, sir, for giving your guidance and valuable information. I would like to hand over to Dr. Avinash Kamble, sir, for proposing the vote of thanks. Thank you, Simran. Good evening, all. As all good things come to an end in life, so is this exuberant webinar. On behalf of Pilla HOC College of Engineering and Technology, I, Dr. Avinash Kamble, feel privileged and take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks to those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this successful webinar on research, how and why, organized by our ASH department, PSCET. At the outset, first of all, I would like to give my hearty vote of thanks to our chief guest and the resource person, Dr. S. Mohan Mahalakshmi Naidu, sir, for gracing this event and sharing with us your findings and opinions today. We are really enlightened with your knowledge and presence, sir. Thank you very much. We are immensely thankful to our second guest of honor, Dr. Narendra Kumar Dasri, for his insightful thoughts and I'm sure that all the participants have taken note of your suggestions. My heartfelt thanks to our beloved chairman, Dr. Vasudevan Pillai, sir, for his thought-provoking uh, thought address, support, and constant guidance. You have always been an inspiration. I would like to extend my profound thanks to our deputy CEO, Dr. Lata Menon, madam, for her words of wisdom and for sharing her views. My generous thank to our beloved principal, Dr. P. J. Matthew, sir, for his enthusiastic support and motivation. A special thanks to HOD, sir, Dr. Abhinash Gatade, sir, for his presence and organizing committee members, Professor Satish, sir, Professor Vijaya, ma'am, Professor Harshada, Professor Sheetal, ma'am. Our heartfelt thanks to our students for active participation. Without them, it wouldn't be a possible. With these warm words and a kind message, we move to the end of today's se seminar. Thank you, one and all. Thank you so much, Abhinash Kamble, sir. With this, we end our webinar on a positive note. Thank you, everyone, for providing your precious time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dasari, sir.
dear participants feedback link is provided in the chat box and within 24 hours you will be getting the certificates on your registered email id thank you Thank you, Nasri sir. Thank you, Naidu sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you. Uh, hello, sir. Avina, sir. Bola. Uh, sir, uh, please uh, tell one student to post link in our uh, YouTube. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, okay. Live stream. Yeah, okay. sure. Sure, 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 sure. Similar, please take a note. Yes, sir. Uh, please post that, you know, uh, this one feedback link to our YouTube live stream. Yes, yes. I think the feedback links are already provided in the WhatsApp group also. Isn't it, Chitra Madam? Ah, we will provide you also. Okay, okay, okay. So that I think we can end the session now here only. We can stop the meeting. Thank you. Mm-hmm.